Welcome to Radio Storybrook. This is Don. This is a uh, fan created podcast dedicated to the television series Once Upon a Time, which is owned by Disney Studios and Horowitz Kitsis Productions. Um, the views expressed are mine and not those of Disney ABC production company that is responsible for Once Upon a Time or any of the actors or crew that works on that program. Although sometimes, God, I wish it did. Um, in this episode, I'm going to try to make it as short as possible because I can go on for an hour on this one particular topic, and I know you don't have that much time. I want to make the case for Storybrooke. Now, I've done this on on many occasions, and I want to do it again because it seems that the producers and the network seem hell-bent not only to destroy any chance that Regina Mills may, may actually get some happiness, but they are uh, hell-bent on getting everybody back to, to, um, to the Enchanted Forest. I used to live from for time to time in a place called New Iberia, Louisiana. We, we spent summer, summers there, and it was a really nice place to live, and, or at least it was a nice place to stay. Pardon, pardon that. Well, my father had to go, go overseas, and they gave us the option to go overseas with him. Or we could stay here, and since I since I had no real intentions of going to Germany, uh, and probably still don't, we wound up staying here, waiting for my father to come back, and we moved to New Iberia. But we were gone for a while, and I and I found out that New Iberia was not the idyllic place that I really thought it was. The uh, mines were small. It was a small town mentality. And a lot had changed anyway. Almost too much. Now, I had a pretty good broadcasting career there. But that's besides the point. Things changed. And sometimes not for the best. And it is because of that that I was thinking about what's going on with with Once Upon a Time and the uh, belief that everyone wants to go back to Storybrooke. If you saw the episode Lacey, one of the things that was going on in that episode was that Charming and Snow, with the help of uh, of Tiny, aka the giant, they had a few magic beans, and they basically are planting uh, beanstalks that would rise to the sky and somehow uh, bring them back to wherever they came from. Now, of course, I think it's a stupid idea, but then again, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not a stockholder in Walt Disney Productions. Emma is not necessarily hot about the idea. Remember, she's spent 29 years of her life down here in Terra Firma. They're going back up to a place where they feel they're, they're more comfortable. 
Although if they really understood what actually happened to them, maybe they might want to give Storybrooke a second chance. That's what I want to talk about. What I feel what Storybrooke really is. And basically it was the world's biggest reset button. Go back to, I guess, the second episode of the, of the second season. We are both. And uh, Charming gave this really impassioned speech. And basically what he says, yes, Grumpy's Grumpy, but he's also Leroy. And Archie is Archie, but also Archie is Jiminy Cricket. And the Mother Superior is the Mother Superior, but she's also the Blue Fairy. And Ruby is still Ruby, but she's also Red, a.k.a. the Big Bad Wolf. And he said that they're both. Now, if they really made the connection with that, and by the way, it is one of the very few times that that uh, David Nolan slash Prince Charming actually had a brain. If they made the connection, they could understand that here's a second chance to be something that you really want to be. For instance, um, if you know of Archie's history, um, was in a family of thieves and con artists, blah, 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 blah. And then he was turned into Jiminy Cricket and he kept saying, let your conscience be your guide. Well, who would be better suited to show a person how to let your conscience be your guide than a therapist? Give me the cricket second chance. The most obvious uh, example would be Ruby. For all of her life, she was this creature that turned into a wolf every time the, the moon was full. And even then, she, there was that uh, hunger that was in her that if she could not control it, uh, could become dangerous. How many people did she kill? How many people did she eat? For 28 years, she never had to worry about that. She just happened to be the rather scantily clad waitress, waitress at uh, Granny's Inn. Red second chance. And you can just go right down the line. August, who used to be Pinocchio, had a second chance. Uh, Dr. Whale, who used to be Dr. Frankenstein, a second chance to heal. Regina, a nice girl who was turned e evil by almost everybody she ever met, now a chance to at least for a little bit, be a loving mom. Which is all she ever wanted until Henry got that book and we all know what happened after that. Regina Mills' second chance. Shall we uh, go for someone who wasn't really part of the, uh, the uh, Enchanted Forest experience? Emma Swan. Here's a woman who bounced from one foster home to another. Some were nice, but others were not nice. And she stayed at all of them until the money ran out and the patients went out, ran out. So, they, so she went back into the shelf again. As a teenager, she had to learn how to fend for herself as... And by doing that, she did some pretty bad things. She became a thief. 
and in jail she she gave birth to a child who she could not care for. So she gave, gave the boy up for adoption. But now think of it this way. If you are a convicted felon, what, what are your chances, for instance, of you winding up being a sheriff? If you were a convicted felon, what would be your chances of winding up being a sheriff? Okay? Think about that. But also, a chance to be reunited with that son and a chance for her to also be a loving mom. Now, of course, if you want to make the Swan Queen connection, as I'm sure a lot of you do, including myself, go ahead and do so. And to me, just a, just a logical person, Emma and Regina together would be the happy ending. And one more. Just one more. I mean, I could go with Mr. Gold. Uh, he was the dark one at one time, but he really doesn't want to be that. He wants to be kind and loving. And I mean, did you hear that description he had of Belle? An accent that you'd never forget? That's, that's, that's not... The, that's, those aren't the words of an evil imp. That's the words of a man in love. A man who's deeply rooted in romance. Yeah, I can go with... Uh, I can go with uh, Gold slash Rumpel still good second chance, but let's focus on Belle. For whatever reason, Belle wound up in, in that cell for 28 years. And last week, um, Regina, mischievously, gave her memories. But they weren't real memories. They were memories that were created, memories that were transferred to her by Regina. Or were they? Were they? I mean, the girl plays, pl plays pool like a champ. I think that a lot of people who've lived the, the good life, walk down the straight and narrow, want to get crooked once in a while. And so they sometimes uh, do things that are outside of their personality. And I think this would happen with uh, Belle slash Lacey last night. This was Bell slash Lacey's chance, second chance, to be that free-spirited person that I guess she always really wanted to be, but couldn't because, well, maybe society. A second chance for Bell. But something else, it's a little bit off this topic, but I was just thinking about it. There's a, there was a reason why of all the places that Belle could have wound up in, she wound up in an insane ward. Is it possible that the memories that Regina gave her were not the memories of Belle, but of Lacey, the person who was originally the possessor of that body? But that's another story. We're talking second chances here. And a lot of people wish they could get that second chance. The people in Storybrooke had it. 
all of them in Storybrooke. Now they're giving up those second chances, at least some of them, to go back, quote, home, unquote. Now, personally, I wouldn't. But then again, I don't, I don't come from that world. But you want to know something? I think that if the writers were smart, they would realize exactly what Storybrooke really is. And if they can understand that, if they can understand that one thing, whether we go Swan Queen or not, whether we uh, match up your favorite ship or not, if they can just understand that one fact... that Storybrooke is indeed a second chance for almost anyone who goes in there. And that would probably even include Neil, Damara, and uh, and the other guy whose name I can't mention right now. You know, I, you know, I looked at them and they didn't seem villainous to me. Of course, we don't know what's going on here with, with those two. Greg, Greg, that's, that's the name of the other guy, Greg. As you can tell, this is not being done with a script. If these people can't accept that second chance, lives would be much different. A hell of a lot different. You know... This could very well even look biblical when you think about it. Anyway, I hope I made a case. Hope you understand. Uh, leave comments, please. At least let me know that, that you're listening. Um, and uh, visit our Tumblr from time to time. We usually post, I, you know, I'm not exactly the world's greatest GIF builder, but there are links and stories and, and pictures that we uh, put up there from time to time, uh, whether I find them or whether I steal, from, steal them from some other Tumblr. Uh, the website is Storybrook with an E, dot, no, it's Storybrook Daily Mirror dot Tumblr dot com. Again, Storybrook with an E, Daily Mirror, dot Tumblr, dot com. I'll see you there. Uh, the next episode is called uh, "The Evil Queen." Um, third to the la- third to uh, the the last uh, episodes of the season. And uh, a lot of people are wondering, you know, why is Regina being tortured? No matter how you feel about Regina, no one deserves that. We'll talk about it later on. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.